How's it going ladies and gents? I am Dave B. I sell Chevys at Schumacher Chevrolet in Livingston, New Jersey. You may have actually purchased a vehicle from me in the past and if so, thank you very much. If you purchased an EV from me, you may have gotten this link in your email because I want to make a quick video to just give you like five tips that will help you with your driving an electric vehicle as the temperatures here in New Jersey drop. One thing you will learn as you drive your electric vehicle, as the temperatures drop, you will get less range out of it. Now on average, I tend to lose about 30 to 40 miles of range. So if the car gets normally about 310, when it's 30 degrees or less, when I fully charge it, I might see 290, 280, 270. You're gonna get less range. And you wanna just be a little bit better prepared for that. Tip number one, charge your car to 100%. You'll notice my car is plugged in currently. It's at 100%. I'm gonna start it up real quick and just show you how to do that and where to do that. If you go on your main screen here, you're gonna click on charging and you're gonna see at this top battery indicator, this wheel that comes up. And with this wheel, you could adjust. And this is how you dial it down to 80% because we all know the 80% rule, right? It's most efficient if you're using up to 80%. It charges faster on a fast charger up to 80%. But when you need every mile you can, and it's cold, and you're losing some mileage, just charge it to 100%. Dial this up. You'll notice here I did fully charge my car, and I'm at 100%. I got 307 miles. Quick second, let me beat you to the comments. Yes, my check tire light is flashing because my front left tire pressure sensor has gone bad. There's already a new one on the way, and they will replace that as soon as the part comes in. So tip number one, charge the car to 100%. Tip number two, keep your vehicle plugged in. Most of us EV buyers are charging the car either at home or at work. So if the vehicle is plugged in, and let's say it's in a garage and you leave it plugged in overnight, the car may actually use the grid to keep the battery at an optimal temperature. This will help the efficiency of the battery when you actually start driving the car in cold weather. And if you wanna go a step further than that, step number two, remote start your vehicle, press lock, hit your button twice or use your mobile app and remote start your vehicle and do it while the vehicle is still plugged in. Now, the reason you want to remote start the vehicle is that's going to prepare the cabin for temperature, right? It's going to turn on heated seats, heated wheel. It's going to turn on your heat. This way the cabin gets nice and comfortable. In fact, if you remote start on your mobile app, you can actually change the temperature so you can make it warmer or cooler depending on what you want. The other thing is while it's doing all that, it's actually pulling the energy from the grid, not from the battery of the car. And as you can hear in my car right now, we're under remote start and the climate control kind of kicked up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the brake pedal to start the car. Climate is then gonna go back to its standard setting. But what I wanna show you is if I turn on my heated wheel, I'm gonna turn on my heat. Let's turn up the fan speed. I got the heated seat on. And what you're gonna notice is as you keep an eye on this needle here, you'll notice it keeps filtering from either using energy or gaining energy into the car. And essentially what's happening is the grid is providing charge to the vehicle. The vehicle's obviously using charge because the heat's on, the heated seat, you know, the fan, all that sort of stuff, but it's sort of averaging out. So you're not actually wasting any battery, any range while it's getting comfortable for you and while the battery is actually getting warmed up so it'll be more efficient when you drive the car. So to recap, step one, charge to 100%. Step two, keep the car plugged in if you have it plugged in at home overnight. Step three, remote start the car while the vehicle is still plugged in. Now, step four and five are both going to be about technique, right? Because when you're driving an electric vehicle, your technique of how you drive is one of the main contributors to the range you get out of the car. So the first thing I want you to do is get used to one pedal driving. The one pedal driving button is either going to be right here below your radio knob, or if you don't see it there, just hit your controls button. And then you're going to see it here. If you hit see more controls, drive and park, one pedal driving, you have off, normal and high. I've gotten used to driving one pedal in high. I like it. For those of you who don't use one pedal driving, here's the basic concept, right? When you're letting go of your throttle, the electric motor is gonna be used to slow the vehicle down faster than if you had the system off, right? Or if you were just coasting. So what ends up happening is you have to use your brake pedal less and you can ultimately drive the car with one pedal just by feathering the throttle. This is very beneficial to the car because normally if you're using your brake pedal, that's the energy of the vehicle being lost to heat, right? Between the brake pads and the brake rotors. If you use one pedal driving and use the electric motor to slow the vehicle, it captures the energy, puts it back into the battery. So you can extend the range you get out of the car. And that may give you the extra mile or two you need, especially in colder weather. So I'm gonna switch mine back to high, close out my screen, and let's just drive over to the side here. We're gonna remove the car from the charger in case anyone else needs it. Lastly, for this video, step number five, it comes down to speed. You gotta keep an eye on your speed 
And if you need more range, you got to slow down a little bit. Now, I know I am born and raised in New Jersey. We are the best drivers in the country. Anyone who says otherwise from out of town just can't keep up with their driving skills. Speed limits on our roads, on our highways are mostly 55 to 65 miles an hour. But as we all know, that flow of traffic is moving 75 to 80. If you're doing 75 to 80 miles an hour, keeping up with the flow of traffic in the left lane, you're gonna find your battery is gonna decrease a lot faster than if you just moved over to the right lane and stuck to the speed limit, the 55, 65 miles an hour. That probably plays the biggest part in how fast you're gonna lose range as you drive. Now, what you could also do is use your cruise control. Cruise control is gonna help regulate the speed, keep it very consistent. You know, you set it for 65 and that car is gonna be doing 65. It's not gonna go through those ebbs and flows as we drive, right? Cause that's what always happens. We get on the road, we get caught up in the flow of traffic. We look down, we're doing 80. Ooh, let me slow down back to 65, 70. You slow down to 65, 70. Next thing you know what happens, you're back up at 75, 80. You know, and you have those inconsistencies in those flows and that's just, you know, it's gonna drain the battery out faster. So use cruise control, stick to the speed limits if you need those extra few miles to get home or to get to your destination. For those who drive electric cars, we sort of all understand this. This is just sort of a reminder. It's some tips for maybe people who are new to electric vehicles. To those of you who have never owned an electric vehicle or never driven an electric vehicle, it's not as bad as it seems. People make it a big issue about electric cars that infrastructure is not there and you know you don't have enough range to get it wherever you're going. It's just simply not true in most cases. In my case, I drive on average about 15 to 20 miles per day, which at 300 miles, even call it 200 miles, if it's very cold out, I can drive numerous days before I actually have to plug the car in and charge. And ultimately, I go home every night to sleep or I'm at work every day. So I can charge in either one of those spots, which is what most of us EV owners do. We charge at home while we're sleeping. You wake up, you have a full battery. It's awesome. Unless you're driving the max that the car can do, like 300 miles a day, it really becomes a non-issue. But these tips will definitely help as the weather gets colder, just in case you get into a situation where you're driving further than you normally do and you're stretching the limits of the vehicle's range. In fact, I got one more tip for you. Use your navigation, right? This car has Google built in. It's got Google navigation on screen that you can use to monitor where you're going and how much range you have. Use that navigation, even if you know where you're going, right? So let's say you're driving somewhere and it's only 100 miles away, you have 300 miles of range. Just plug in the address you're going and what's gonna happen is, not only is it gonna navigate you to that destination, it's gonna help avoid traffic and stuff like that. It's also monitoring the vitals of the vehicle. You know, what range are you achieving? How much battery is left? How many kilowatts are you using? And it's gonna update essentially in real time to how much range you'll have left when you get to your destination. I give you a perfect example. I was driving from the Jersey Shore back up north from my parents' house one day, and on the, the screen, when it showed my home location, it told me I would arrive at home with about 18% battery. More than enough, that's perfect. Well, as I'm driving and I'm listening to the radio, I'm not paying attention, like we talked earlier, my speeds are fluctuating up and down, I'm on the parkway, everyone's doing 75, 80 miles an hour. Next thing I know, a message popped up and it said, uh, recommended charge location. And I looked down and it was trying to send me off the highway to charge the car and I was at 9% and it was red. So I was like, well, wait a minute, I was at 19% before, why am I at 9% now? Again, I look down, I'm doing 75, 78 miles an hour. So I said, you know what, let me kick the speed back. Let me get to like 68, 70 miles an hour and see what happens. As I did that and I drove a number of miles, all of a sudden that indicator on the screen was no longer red and it showed like 13% or 14%. And by the time I got home that day, I actually had about 20% remaining on the battery. And it was all essentially speed related. I just took the speed down. I kept it just under 70. Yes, it took me an extra four or five minutes to get home, but I got home with plenty of range left over. And I was able to make that adjustment in real time while on that road trip. So definitely tip number six, use your nav, plug the destinations in, whether you know where you're going or not. This way you can use the system to monitor what battery you'll have left when you get to that spot you're going.